Welcome to my transparent watercolor tutorial, Just Daisies. This is a narrated step-by-step -step video at normal speed. It's a companion video to my Just Daisies demonstration, which is set to music at 3x speed. Before I begin painting, I'm going to go through the color mixtures that I use, and I've used three uh, different colors for this painting. Sap green. The second color that I've used is pyrrole red. And the third color that I used is yellow ochre. Now yellow ochre I used in a very small area of uh, my painting at the beginning. The rest of the painting is all done with a mixture of sap green and pyrrole red. You can see each of these colors are fairly bright and colorful and the, my painting is a very muted painting and I achieve that by mixing the pyrrole red and the sap green. Uh, the red and green are on opposite sides of the color wheel so they act as complements and uh, they neutralize one another. So here I'm drawing the pyrrole red into the green and you can see that I'm getting a warm neutral. Now, if I take a little bit more green and draw that up into there, it's still a fairly warm tone, but it's, it's leaning more towards the sap green side. So just by varying the ratio of the mixture of the two paints, I can get a green neutral or a neutral leaning more towards the, the red side of the color wheel. I think more often than not, people will look at that reddish neutral and think that it was a earth tone out of a tube, but it's not. It's this mixture of the red and the green. Now I want to get a little bit darker value mixture, so I'm going to take my sap green and my pyrrole red with a heavier concentration of pigment and less water in it. And I'm going to mix these two together, and then I'm, just, I'm going to get a very dark value neutral. So this is a leaning towards the reddish side of things, but it's, it's a darker value. And I'm going to put a little bit more green in it, and now I swing it more towards the green side. But it's still very dark value, and it doesn't hold the, the, the brightness of the out-of-the-tube color, and it's darker because of the, the mix of the two complements. So all these variations of mixtures have been achieved by combining sap green pyrrole red and varying the amounts of water to change the value. And I can add more water here and make this a lighter uh, wash, a very light value wash. And that's what I've done for a lot of this painting is I use this lighter neutral tone and um, I vary it from leaning towards the red side or leaning towards the green side. On the right is a sketch that I used to do my painting from and it's just a uh, sketch with a pen and then I highlighted with a highlight marker where I wanted some of my darker values. It's a, it's a very simple drawing to do a painting from so I use it for my basic shapes and not much more and then I start by putting a drawing on my uh, painting surface and I just gradually develop and I add things as I develop my painting. I've been asked a few times if there's a way that I can make a sketch available uh, for people to work from and I'm working on that but this is a light sketch that I've drawn on my work surface there's not a lot of detail in it. All I've done really is block in some of the larger shapes and it gives me a suggestion of the, the size and the, the motion that I'm trying to achieve. But I'm not really doing any detail drawing here in my preliminary sketch. I'm going to begin my painting process and I'm working on a half sheet of watercolor paper so that's 15 inches by 22 inches and I've taken two inches off the long side so it's 15 by 20. I like those proportions a little bit better. They're the same as a full sheet or a quarter sheet. 
and um, so it's not a small painting but it's not a full sheet either so it's somewhere in the middle a lot of my demonstrations are done on quarter sheet watercolor this one is a half sheet so it's twice as large and I'm going to begin working on these three uh, centers of this flower the shapes that make the center of the flower because there's a texture I want to get in there and uh, so I'm going to start there as uh, the beginning of my painting process and what I'm doing is I'm applying a, a wash of yellow ochre and then I'm coming in at the bottom with some sap green and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that to all three of these shapes and to get this textural quality I'm after I'm going to use coarse salt and put on there and then spritz it a little bit with water too I don't like to get too gimmicky but there's there's times when I want a certain texture and I'll use the technique that will give me the best and, uh, and efficient result and uh, I like the, the effect that you can get um, in limited amounts using coarse salt or a spritzing with water so I, I put this yellow ochre down then I touch the base of it to get a, a gradation of that sap green in, in the base of the, the, the center of the flower shape and then I come in and I'm going to sprinkle some of this coarse salt into these um, shapes that are still very wet a little bit more sap green there I just spritz that with a little water because I want it to be a little more fluid when I put the salt in. So here I just shake a little bit of salt in there. You can start to see it starts to create that texture. And um, as it dries a little bit here, I hit it with a spray bottle. And this is a coarse spray. I have a very fine mist spray that I use a lot in my painting process. But this one has a coarser spray and it, it uh, helps add to the textural qualities that I'm trying to achieve. So you can see there in the close-up that nice texture you get. Now I'll dry that just as I just have done and remove the salt and you can see the result. I'm going to begin painting here with a uh, one inch flat brush and from here on out and the rest of my painting it's all going to be done with sap green and pyrrole red and as I was mentioning as I was showing my color mixture when you look at this tone um, it would, wouldn't be uh, unusual for somebody to think that this is just the earth tone that I took out of a tube but uh, as I've demonstrated it's not so I've laid that tone down and I've come in with a spray bottle here to soften that up a little bit so I'm working in a middle value and um, I'm going to start working around the the whole composition here and start to uh, map out the larger shapes uh, that I have in my my painting. I'm going to put this uh, sketch of mine here in the top right corner and you can see as I'm starting to map this out I'm I'm following the plan that I had set in my sketch. While my sketch doesn't have a lot of detail, it does have some valuable information for me on the direction that I want to take this and that uh, where I want to have my uh, middle value shapes. When you're designing and creating your composition, you, you normally want to have a, a dominant value. You have light, middle value, and dark, and you want to have a uh, one of those dominant and probably most often in my work middle value is the dominant value but in this painting it's going to be uh, light value is going to be the dominant value it's going to take it's going to be the largest portion of this painting is going to be very light value I've been working on the left side there um, so far and now I'm going to start working some of this uh, middle value here on the right side so I can start to draw out some of those shapes and start to see those flower shapes coming through. 
still using my same the same brush that I started this painting with and um, I'll, I'll use this brush in this painting quite a bit for the initial blocking out and then I'll go down to uh, some smaller brushes because I'm going to have uh, a lot of smaller brushwork here where I'll be working with some darker values and building some shapes. Here you can see I still like to to use my spray bottle and soften edges and if you look right now I have a combination, quite a combination of hard and soft edges. Um, you can see the uh, some of the flower edges are, are quite hard but then other edges on those same flowers are, are pretty soft and as I, I spray with a fine mist spray bottle it gets pretty wet and as I brush paint on to those areas that I've sprayed I, I get some soft edges and uh, when I when I reach a point and, and anywhere in my painting where I can't make the type of brush mark I want because it's too wet then I just stop and I use my hair dryer and I dry it One of the things I'll mention when you're working on a very wet sheet of paper, you need to keep an eye on um, where your paint is puddling and where water is puddling on your surface, especially where it hits dry areas because of the, the resistance of the dry area. It won't flow and it'll puddle and it can create undesirable backwashes. So keep an eye on that. An easy way to deal with that is just to take a damn brush and it'll pick it right up or you can dab it with a Kleenex. I do both uh, and then at some point I just dry it. So here you can see that I've dried this and it's more, much lighter. Um, your paint gets much lighter once it's dry and you need to be aware of that when you're painting and trying to build your value. Sometimes you think you've put down a dark value and once it's dry it's really not quite uh, as dark as you had thought it was or what you intended it to be. Now I'm starting to bring a little bit more color into my composition. It's still a muted color, but it's leaning more towards the green side. And I'm still keeping my edges somewhat soft in a lot of areas. And if I were to break down my painting process, early on in my painting process, I um, am working with larger shapes most often. My uh, edges are often soft edges. My value is normally very light and my brushes are bigger. So as I progress through the painting process, I start to develop more um, defined edges. I start to work on more detail and my shapes get smaller. I start to use smaller brushes and I start to get darker in my values. So I start very light, soft edge, large shape, big brushes, and I work my way down to the detail areas where I'm working very small shapes with smaller brushes and very dark values. And this is just how I approach my paintings. There's uh, people that meticulously work their paintings in, in detail from start to finish. They take section by section and just detail it out and just build the whole painting that way. And that's great because that's what they're comfortable with and that's how they like to paint. And I think everybody has to find their own style eventually. And, and use a uh, approach or develop a process that you're comfortable with and gives you the results you're after. I'm gonna come in and uh, start working with a darker value here and a smaller brush. And I'm just making some small brush marks around my composition. And this is gonna start to give me a feeling of depth it's going to start to set a value scale for me that I can judge um, the, the range that I have in my, my painting. You can see that these darker values um, open up the scale from now that I have going from white to light to middle value and dark value. And it kind of gives me a benchmark there that uh, I want to carry through the composition. And I'm making these little brush marks where some of these shapes intersect. And it starts to bring those shapes out. Just just to, does it takes a very slight mark to make a difference in an area, and it starts to separate shapes. OK, 
continuing to make these marks and you can see how the uh, I can pick up take a value and give a suggestion that it's going underneath something like I did just there where you have what appears to be the the petal of a flower and that you're seeing through behind it to a, a stem shape that's moving behind it and coming out on the other side um, I do that a lot to try and build layers and create depth in my paintings and I'm going to take this spray and I'm going to diffuse a little bit some of that color as I, I work in some of these areas right now and get some nice uh, gradation of that green tone going in my painting so I put that uh, fairly dark value down and then I soften it with a spray and it gives a nice gradation and takes some of that color um, through the composition here I'm going to take some of that uh, darker green tone and put it around the center of that flower and then gradate it out and it just creates a nice shadow effect down in the center of the flower I'm going to do the same thing on the, the other flower here just put a mark with my brush with some of that tone and then spray it out nice thing about that spray is you can get it to diffuse in different directions and uh, you can kind of control where that's going and I'm going to take some of this green and I'm going to start to use it to to differentiate that that flower in the foreground a little bit more from what's going on behind it and this is the way I like to work I just like to build layers little by little and um, throughout my process I'll stop and, and dry my painting again when I feel I can't make the mark that I want to make or if it's getting just a little too wet and uh, I'm at risk of backwashing I stop and dry it and you'll notice that as I'm painting here and I'm spraying with my bottle I don't get too excited when uh, a big drip of water just starts to run down my page and I still have plenty of time to to deal with it and sometimes I like the effect uh, that it that it gives me and if I don't I I hit it with a, a Kleenex or a wet brush and just pick it up but um, you know it, it, as you build your layers and if you're drying your your paper little by little as you go once it's dry it's pretty well set and it's it takes a little bit of work to agitate it so spraying over top of it doesn't really doesn't harm the the layers that you've built underneath it 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 builds up a layer of glaze just as if you're putting a brush on it here I've reached a point where I want to remove some of these pencil marks I do this often midway in my painting the more paint gets on it the harder it is to remove and right now some of these pencil marks are defining the shapes that are really lost edges for me in my painting and I want to get rid of those so I can really see what's going on in my work and uh, I use this needed rubber eraser I have a brand called Factus it's a soft white rubber eraser they do a pretty good job can't always get all the marks off but it doesn't bother me to have a few sketch marks on my painting now I'm going to do some more uh, detailed brush work I'm coming back in with some of these very dark values smaller shapes and I'm using a uh, quill brush that I like to use when I'm working in some of these detail areas it holds a lot of paint but has a very fine point point. and here I'm trying to give a suggestion of some of these dark shapes moving behind these flowers in the foreground so I'll try and carry these values from uh, this side beside uh, a petal shape to the other side like I am right here so it looks like it's moving underneath it and I'll bring that down here and it's just kind of this lost and found edges and and putting shapes like this behind it uh, 
start to defi help define the, the shape of the positive image that's coming over top of it. I'm going to start to put some larger areas of color down to start to separate a little bit more of the background from uh, the flower shapes in the foreground. So I've got a uh, wash brush, a round wash brush, and I'm just putting some dark strokes down. Then I want to soften the edges a little bit, and um, that starts to separate what's going on there uh, in the background a little bit more from the uh, some of the flowers and here again there's a uh, some water and I just pick it up with a brush and with a Kleenex and then just keep painting so I, I the, the green I'm using there is a middle value and it it again it starts to follow a little bit the plan that I had in my sketch I'm going to take the same approach here in the middle of my composition where I'm trying to bring some of that those flower shapes forward and set some other shapes back um, using the same wash brush and a middle value to a darker value green right now. And what I'm putting down right, right now is still an area where I want to have some soft edges so I'm still spraying this. want to get some of that same effect across the whole page so now I'm laying in tone here on the right and I'm going to spray it soften the edges and diffuse the color get some gradation going on on that side of my composition we go to that lower left corner of my composition I'm not really happy with the shapes I have going on behind that so I'm going to come in with my brush. I'm going to apply a darker value. It actually it lines up a little bit better with what I had in my sketch, and uh, downplay the the shapes I had there. They're still going to be there, but it's going to be uh, not going to have a contrast that I had. It's going to be a little bit more subtle. I'm doing more uh, detailed brushwork with very dark values, smaller shapes, and starting to build more layers of uh, depth into my painting here with this dark value. Starts to send some of those areas back. And just as I did earlier, I'm going to try and weave some of this dark value in between the lighter white shapes of the petal. That creates that. Uh, suggestion of overlap and, and sends the area further back uh, helping build the depth in the painting. I've built up uh, quite a few values at this stage and starting to have some definition there but I, I need a larger shape that's a more in a middle value or darker value and so I'm going to take a, a darker value glaze and I'm going to put it over this upper right corner and uh, tone that down a little bit. And this is where it takes a leap of faith, a little bit of guts, I guess, because you're going to take a big old wash and you're going to put over some of your brushwork that you've been gradually building up. But um, I'm taking a one inch flat brush here with this tone and I'm going to take it over top that whole area there and then get it gradated a little bit more with the spray bottle. So I think it's challenging sometimes for people to to take a glaze such as this and put it over top of the area that they've been working on but it can help tie a composition together uh, or tie an area together and uh, as I was saying earlier how I work from light to dark and bigger shapes to smaller shapes and start working in the detail after I've started to put in some of the detail and I start to see uh, the overall composition and evaluate the shapes I have, I, I often come in with a glaze 
and and really try and tie my composition together. So I, I felt I needed this resting place for the eye, a, a larger middle value area. So I, that's what I put this glaze on. And again, it doesn't bother me that I have these drips going on my paper. Um, to me, it's the beauty of watercolor. And uh, I still have a predominantly uh, dominant light value for this painting. But I've introduced a larger shape of a middle value. And that tone carries behind that flower and, and all the way through the painting. If you were to follow from the right to the left, you start to see that dark coming out on the other side. Um, so it, it helps tie it all together. One of the things I like to do late in my process is take a brush that just has some water in it. It's uh, just damp. It's not dripping wet. And um, I'll take it and do some lifting on the paper just with some linear shapes. Helps build a little activity in my painting. And uh, it works better when you're dragging it over the darker values. And often what I do is I'll start that brush in a dark value and it'll drag some of that pigment off onto the lighter value that's beside it. And it gives a nice effect because you have a light on a dark and then a dark on a light. Uh, but I'll, I'll take this, just a few areas around the composition. Like I said, it gives a linear shape. It helps build activity and uh, sometimes then I'll come in with some glazing and I'll uh, reinforce the strength of that by putting some darker values on the sides of the, the linear shape that was created by it. Here's a good example where I'm dragging that uh, darker tone out over the light tone and it's now it's giving me a little bit of lighter value on the dark shape and a darker value over top of the light shape. Now I'm going to take a smaller brush with a, a little bit of a medium to dark value and I'm going to paint on, on the edge, the outside edge of a few of those brush marks that, that, that where I lifted out some of the tone and that helps again reinforce the, that line that I put in there. So I take that value and I go right beside the area where I lifted off some pigment and with a darker value and it makes that area that I lifted off more pronounced. Same thing here. I've decided I want to build my value up a little bit here in this lower left corner and a few other areas. I want to make a few larger areas of dark value. So I'm putting this dark tone in, but you can see that I didn't just take a brush and fill this whole shape. I'm still uh, breaking up the, the value, the, the shape that I'm making a little bit with some of the, the uh, shapes that are moving through there and in this area right now I have a linear shape moving through there and I've stopped and gone on either side of it with my darker value so it still has that sensation of a, of a layer layering effect there and, and moving back into space and I'm going to take that dark tone and I'm going to start working around different areas and this will start to be my final build up here as I get closer to the, the, the end of uh, doing this painting One of the areas that I wanted to build up some more values here in this lower left corner is I want that flower in the lower left quadrant to be more my focal point and I felt I needed some more contrast to help bring the eye there, bring the viewer there and some more activity. So I decided to build up that value. A lot of times I would have really gone after that dark value in that area. I, I often start around my center of interest but I really started this one with a lot more fluid washes and larger shapes, um, but I do need a little bit more value in this area, a little more contrast, I think, just to make it more of the focal point. Now I'm going to finish this up by putting a few final marks here. I have a, a 
small rigger brush with a dark value and uh, just as I lifted off some of these linear shapes I also like to come back in towards the end and and put some dark value marks that are similar and uh, I interrupt those lines as they look like they're passing under other shapes and, and again this is just another technique to help me build um, some layers and some dimension to my painting so it's just here and there just to, and it creates another level of activity with this dark value linear marks that I'm putting down you can see how I break it up to make it look like it's going behind something so there you have my painting just daisies I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching